This week I'm in Hiroshima, Japan, the site of the nuclear bomb drop. I visit Ground Zero and learn a lot about this event and the following decades and how they affected Japanese culture. And later I will discuss some of the most basic Japanese phrases that you're gonna want to know and how to cheat most of them. <laughs> Today I'm at the site of the nuclear bomb dropping. It's kind of a solemn experience, I guess. A lot of introversion and inner thought. It's kind of neat that it became a peace park and not just a memorial. It's here to actively promote peace among all nations. So Peace Memorial Park is pretty big. It spans two to three city blocks. It's covered in different parks and forests and gardens and things like that. That's a nice piece of architecture. You can see the flower boxes below where people come and pay their respects and drop off the flower. If you stand directly in front of this piece, you can see a flame in the mid-ground and in the distance, the background, you're going to see one of the few buildings left standing after the bomb hit. It's kind of an incredible visual and it's gorgeous to see. I'm standing here with my good friend Mariko. She's half American, half Japanese, has spent a lot of time living in both countries. I figured there's no one better to explain to us what we're seeing in Hiroshima. I'm standing in front of a statue. What is this statue symbolic of? This is a very important part of the Peace Park. A young girl who was affected by the atomic bomb radiation. She was in the hospital. She was told that if she makes a thousand cranes, that her one wish will come true, and her one wish was to stay alive. She made a thousand cranes all by herself. That started this wonderful tradition, and now people still come here every day, every single day. People bring a thousand cranes and hang it up in her honor. Was her wish granted? Well, unfortunately. No. That's sad. We won't. We won't yeah, no, on that we part won't too much. That. This is for happiness. <laughs> what is this bell, and why are people ringing it loudly? It's kind of symbolic to let her know that people are still thinking of her. It's like, hey, we're right here. Yeah. How does like Japanese culture and the, the people feel about Americans visiting? landmark oh, is it weird at all no okay because in my thing. head it's like returning to the scene of crime <laughs> no 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 and no, i tried no. really hard to appear canadian today <laughs> with like a moose and maple leaves everywhere but yeah, yeah just in my head it seems weird it's right. like no amount of time could be uh -huh. could make those actions for no not at all we definitely love having people from all different cultures here to you know unite and form a peaceful environment they just recently had President Obama here. Okay. Yeah. yeah we so. see I think they're made of cranes, but it's like his face oh, really? and the rainbow that oh, says peace. So that's why it's pretty much called the peace park. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Japan's pretty awesome. You guys it are is. great. Behind me, you can see one of the only buildings left standing after the bomb landed in Hiroshima. It's kind of a strange sight to see. It looked like it was probably a beautiful building. It's been there for so long. It's just a kind of eerie reminder of the past, I guess. But it seems that the Japanese culture has taken on a very positive outlook on the situation, just kind of promoting peace in the area. Just at a tower across the street from the A-bomb dome, as you can see over my shoulder. It's not a massive tower by any means, but it's 12 floors and it gives you an incredible panoramic view of the city and then of course the Peace Park and everything else behind it. You look down on, on all the history and honestly the, the horrors of war. Really sobering experience but this view is incredible so I'm just trying to take in the, the positives of it all. I believe this blue building over my shoulder is where the bomb actually landed and everything else was blown out from there. It's pretty astounding. Kind of at a loss for words. It's so bizarre to think that Everything's built up from where it used to be when everything was literally completely flat. But now Hiroshima is a bustling city once again. Just below the observation deck is an origami station. The whole floor is dedicated to folding paper cranes and then dropping them. I guess paper cranes is a real honest to goodness symbol of peace for Japan and Hiroshima. Some neat exhibits too. Kind of feels artsy. The exhibit's pretty fun. It has a couple of things including connect action. And of course, I folded my own paper crane. When I was done, I had a kind of lost in translation moment that's a little bit better if you imagine it as an old kung fu movie with bad dubbing. She says she doesn't like me. No, no, I don't like you. No, <laughs> you are funny looking, huh? <laughs> hmm, I wish she was nicer. 
I don't like you. I take your arms. I want to tear them off. I want to twist like this. Twist like this. And then throw you from building and watch you fall. Twist. Ha! Joke's on you. I bet I could fly. No! You were supposed to fly. You were supposed to show her I can do it. Yeah, from the building right here. Let's talk basic Japanese phrasing. Now, to say thank you, most people know is arigato. That's very informal. To be more formal and to perhaps strangers, you're gonna wanna say arigato gaizomas. Now, the first time I visited Japan, I didn't know what that second part was, and you kinda just mumble through it if you say four syllables, arigato ga as you're walking out of a convenience store, they understand. It's kinda like if we were to substitute thank you with mm -hmm. Most people in context will understand what you're trying to say and you can kind of get away with it. It's pretty entertaining actually to just pretend to say things and people pretend to understand and you both go along on your way. Of course I'm saying everything with my Canadian accent, not my pretend Japanese one. It, it needs a lot of work so I'm just not even going to try. You also might want to know how to say excuse me. It's very common. You even use it to call your waiter in a restaurant. It's Siyoma-san. But again, I don't know how to say it perfectly and I can't even spell it, so it's not gonna be on the screen in front of you. Just do your best and mumble through it and most of the time you're gonna get your message across. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and stay tuned for another travel video just like this one every Thursday. And of course, you can always find me on Twitter and Instagram to keep track of me as I travel all over the world. While I have you, why not check out last week's video where I learn about how insane Japanese baseball is, and you can check out a playlist of all of my videos from all over Japan.